So how do you feel that women's roles have changed in film over the years? The parts themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a tricky conversation because some of the best parts that I've gotten a chance to play have been written by men. Mm -hmm. For instance, this picture, 20th Century Women, with, this, mm -hmm. with three incredibly mm -hmm. complex um, roles for women. Mm -hmm. Not only the character that I get to play, Dorothea, who for me, as I said, is still kind of enigmatic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In fact, I'm really interested as people see the film, mm -hmm. I find myself wanting to know, well, what did you think was going on in that mm -hmm. moment? Mm -hmm. What did you get from this or mm -hmm. that moment? Mm -hmm. um, which we were very much trying to do in a way, Mike and I, meaning right. for Dorothea, but that she, unexpected things happen. Mm -hmm. She does things that you don't necessarily expect her to do. Mm -hmm. But the complexity of Greta Gerwig's character mm -hmm. and then the teenage girl that Elle Fanning plays. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love the fact mm -hmm. that there is a 16-year-old girl who has no cliches mm -hmm. and that there's this entire, like you were saying about life and that there's a sort of way we present ourselves mm -hmm. and then there's this inner world that we all have mm -hmm. and that Mike managed to really capture that. Mm -hmm. So I see, I see this, this kind of a project as that exemplifies how the way that we're seeing women in film is becoming less and less stereotyped mm -hmm. and less and less uh, sort of in a box of, mm. oh, this is a mother. And of course, it used to, it used to be it was either good mother or bad mother. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm sure you can speak to that with your project, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. there you were playing this mom. Did you have any, when you saw the role, what, what did you think? I mean. Well, I always said that I was never going to play a crack addict. Right. Because, you know, I, I was raised by a single mother. Mm. Um, but she was, you know, she was an incredibly powerful force in my life, mm. very intelligent, very capable. Mm. Um, had me at 18, but went on to put herself through university. I would, I would actually go to university with my mum, sit in the corner, colouring in while she studied. Um, she put herself through university and then she went on to become a successful screenwriter. She's now a healer, actually. But um, the point being that I just saw women as strong and capable and yet on film and on television, those weren't the women that were being represented to me. And so I just thought at the start of my career, I'm going to make it my mission or the criteria in which I choose roles is going to, is going to ensure that I'm representing positive images of women. And I just thought playing a crack addict wasn't really part of that. So initially I had huge reservations about taking on the role. Um, and it wasn't until Barry explained to me that like your director, this was based on his own mother, you know, and that's what really touched me. And I thought here is somebody who has a vested interest in ensuring that this character doesn't become reduced to being a stereotype, but that she gets her full humanity and complexity. And that's what you want from any role, really. You know, that's, that's what you're asking for, the opportunity to give the character what they deserve, which is everybody deserves to have their, their full humanity reflected on screen. Sure. I have a, uh, a band, man. We're called the Abiders. <laughs> we, <laughs> we go, go, you know, I'm yeah. realizing a so teenage dream. So not only dream, putting up with it, you're yeah, like shaking yeah. hands and going, let's turn and it we, on. We, we performed. I had my Beatles <laughs> moment, man. I went to a Lebowski fest. You know, they got these two-day yeah. fests, and we showed up, you know, and played. <laughs> and that's my Beatle, my Beatle moment, playing to a sea of dudes and yes. bowling pins, you know. And 